In statistics, we often are taking a sample and extrapolating to a population. Suppose we wanted to look at vitamin A deficiency among uh, children in Micronesia. We might look to take a sample of uh, children in Micronesia and run some sort of medical test to determine whether or not they are indeed vitamin A deficient. To test every child would be a very large sample to tackle and quite frankly probably could not realistically be done. Statistics lets us take a much smaller sample and extrapolate from that sample to the population. But that means understanding something about how samples relate to populations. For example, if I take a sample and measure the mean level of vitamin A, what does that tell me about the population? My sample is going to have to be a good random sample of the children that I'm trying to measure vitamin A uh, levels within. Uh, vitamin A deficiency is something known to be an issue here in Micronesia. And then I'm going to have to understand how that sample mean relates to the population mean for the larger population. And so that's what I'm really looking at in the following videos, is how sample means relate to the population mean for the population they come from. Suppose I want to know, for example, the average mass of these 72 marbles that are here. I could mass all 72 and work out the average mass for one marble. That would take time and may be difficult to, to do if the sample size gets a whole lot larger. But I could say take one marble and say, okay, then that's 5.2, so the average must be 5.2. And write that down, 5.2. But that wouldn't be a very good point estimate of what the average actually is for these marbles necessarily. If I had picked a different marble, I would have gotten a different point estimate, 4.9. It would make more sense to sample, say, a set of marbles, maybe five marbles, randomly selected, technically, to make sure there's no bias, but there is no particular order to the marbles on the table, but close my eyes and pick a marble and add it to it, 5.9. And now I could calculate the average of these five, and from that average, I could work out, uh, uh, that would be my new point estimate for the uh, population mean. The complication is that my average, of course, will not be exactly equal to the population mean, except maybe by coincidence. And if I take a different set of five marbles, I will get a different sample mean. The question that arises in statistics is, if I have a whole bunch of different samples, if I, if I keep picking out five marbles, randomly selecting, and I keep massing them, what will be the shape of the distribution of these sample means? Not just one sample mean, but many sample means. Because if I can know the shape of the sample means, the distribution, a histogram of sample means, then I can work out some idea of how close I am likely to be. But I need to know how they distribute. I need to know their shape. And so I'm going to take a set of uh, 10 sample means uh, to uh, and see how those distribute relative to the distribution of these 72 marbles. Here, the five marbles could be thought of as the same as measuring, for example, the level of beta carotene or vitamin A precursor uh, in, or vitamin A levels within five children, and then trying to extrapolate from that sample to the 
uh, population likely level of vitamin A. That's the core idea here, that a sample can be used to extrapolate to a population. For this particular class example, the 72 marble masses that constitute the population of marbles is actually known. The 10 samples that I took provided 10 sample means. 5.38, 4.545. Now, because all 72 in the whole population are known, I do have the ability to calculate the actual population mean. And the actual population mean is down here, 5.2 grams, 5.20 grams. You'll notice that none of the population means is 5.2. Each sample mean is a point estimate for the population mean, and none are equal to the population mean. But they are all close to the population mean. And the question I had asked was, what is the shape of the histogram of the sample means? Well, using a frequency table, I've put together both the distribution of the marbles, that's here, and the distribution of the sample means, that's here. And then the relative frequencies for the marbles in column Q, and the relative frequencies for the sample means. And while the marbles run from 4.4 grams up to 6.5 grams, the sample means cover a much smaller range, ranging from, well, 4.54 at the low end, uh, and all the way up at a, about a, a 5.38 at the upper end. The result is, if you try to make a histogram of the two relative frequencies, it doesn't quite look right. So I often do histograms as smooth line charts when I want to look at them. I can see that the sample mean relative frequencies is a little bit higher and slightly narrower than the relative frequencies of the marbles. It can be seen in this graph here. So the sample means are distributing as a roughly as a symmetric peak, left and right uh, symmetric peak. Uh, they're roughly normally distributed. Notice that the marbles themselves are skewed right. You've got a pretty good skew right. And there is some skew in the sample means, but the skew is not as significant in the sample means. This example is designed to demonstrate that the sample means do distribute as a centrally peaked uh, symmetric distribution, otherwise known as a normal distribution. There's one caveat, one caution here, and that is my samples are small. I've taken only five marbles from the 72 in each sample, and so there there are some issues here. However, the for, for those who may know some statistics, the marbles are roughly symmetrically distributed with a bit of right skew, so they are what is known as a well-behaved population, statistically speaking. Five is small and means I would have to technically use an adjusted normal distribution called a t-distribution, and that will come up later in uh, chap when we hit chapters uh, um, 9, 10, and 11. Prime, we'll start to look at using the t-distribution to adjust for small sample sizes as we have here. These are There's five marbles in each sample. So with that caveat and proviso, the, despite the fact that the samples are small at five, uh, then they are potentially not truly random, but essentially random, pseudo-random samples, we still have a symmetric distribution that's normal and narrower. And uh, our last piece of chapter eight will be to calculate the new uh, standard deviation for this narrower curve. 
the standard deviation for the uh, for the sort of population itself uh, basically is 0 0.37. That's my complete set of data. And of course, for each sample, I could have a sample standard deviation. And so I'll uh, go ahead and uh, calculate one of these standard deviations here. Let me calculate the standard deviation for the first sample. E equals, this is a standard deviation of this particular sample. And then I'll grab the the five in the sample. Not the mean, just those five. Got to get back here. Yep. And come close that. And I can see here that I've got a standard deviation that is uh, 0 0.408. 0 0.408 is a standard deviation. That is too large an estimate for the distribution of the sample means, which is narrower. Uh, the sample means do not distribute at that, although it is close to the uh, actual 0.37 standard deviation. The sample standard deviation of a small sample can be a good estimate of the population standard deviation of all of the elements. So, if you recall, on the normal curve, the distance from the peak to the inflection point is the standard deviation for the normal curve. And for these sample means, we can calculate an estimated standard dv, if you will. It's a, called a standard error, not a standard deviation. But that narrower curve has a slightly narrower value. That is, it has a value. Let me clear this out and put it in here. The distribution of the sample mean has a distance from the center to the inflection point equal to this value here, the standard deviation, divided by the square root of n. And n is a sample size in my sample here. If all I had was, I have, I'm pretending that I have only the sample of five marbles to look at. This 0.18 value that is seen here is called the standard error of the mean. It's called the standard error of the mean. It is the estimated distance uh, from the center, the red line you see there, the center to the inflection point on the normal curve. There you can see that distance from the center of the distribution of many sample means curve to the inflection point as the standard error of the sample mean. This tells me the spread. It's going to be very useful when we try to determine how close we might be. What I now know is that if I go up and down two of these standard errors of the mean, that's what we'll call this new number, it's the standard deviation divided by the square root of n, the standard error of the mean. If I go up and down by one standard error of the mean from the sample mean, I have a 68% chance of including the population mean. Uh, or I can be, well, later learn to say I'm 68% confident. There's some subtleties to this that I'm going to uh, run and run around at the moment. But I've got basically a 68% chance, it's a simple way to think of it, of including the mean. And if I can go out two plus or minus two standard errors, I have a 95% chance of including the sample mean in my, uh, within that range. It will be called a confidence interval, and I'll refer to having a 95% level of confidence that I've captured the population mean within that interval. And I can do this because the shape of the sample means turns out to be a normal distribution. Then sample means taken from a population will distribute normally around the actual population mean. In other words, the mean of the means, the mean of these values here. Now, the mean of the means, it turns out, 
is, as you can see at the bottom here, 505. That still is another point estimate. The actual value we know is 5.2. So there will always be the issue of it being a point estimate. But the actual, if you distribute, pull samples from a population, those samples will have means to distribute normally around the population mean. And that becomes the machinery by which samples, even a single sample, can be used to calculate a range in which a mean can be found. This is covered also in Chapter 8 in the textbook, and it's referred to the sampling distribution of the mean or the distribution of the sample mean in different texts. And so there'll be links below to some of the earlier videos that helped set this particular example up and to the section of the book that covers this material.